All right, let's talk a little bit about tenant representation. Now, we've touched on this several times already. So we've kind of talked about most of this um, section already. Remember that you, when dealing with your client, you can be a lister, a uh, listing agent, or you can be the selling agent, or you can be limited agent. And much like we have the same in the residential world, we also have the same in the commercial world. So there is the exclusive right to sell. We do have exclusive agency, and we do have open under the listing side. Uh, under the selling side, we still have the same thing. But th in the commercial world, the open clause is very much more used, and people are aware of this. And I think that goes back towards the thing that we were talking about earlier about specificity, uh, being a specialized person. Yeah. <laughs> specificity. Yeah. That was a song by the police, wasn't it? Really? Nobody? Okay. Um, because a person that maybe deals with land may not deal with industrial buildings. So what ends up happening is you get an investor that comes along and says, look, I want to build a distribution center and I can either build it or I'll buy one. So I'm going to engage a land development guy and I'm going to engage an industrial buildings guy and one's going to go out and look for me a currently standing vacant industrial building. The other guy's going to go out and look for land and he knows what zoning I need. He knows what size uh, property I need, all of that, and whichever one comes back to me first with a deal that I can live with, that's the one that's going to be my agent. The other person gets, what's the proverbial word? The shaft, all right? And as a commercial broker, you better be used to that, especially when dealing with buyers, because that's very common for them to go, hey, look, I've engaged in a uh, guy on the north side and a guy on the south side because I could go either place. I'm just looking for 15,000 square foot. It's got to be I-2, U, zoned, yada, 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 and go. If you find me one, you're my agent. If he finds me one, he's my agent. I can't assign an exclusive right to sell or an exclusive buyer's agency agreement, either one of those, because if he finds me one on the north side, you're going to want to invoke that clause and get paid down here for something you didn't do on the south side. So I enter into an open agreement. You dance with the one that brought you. If you bring me a deal, I will be your client or you will be my agent on that deal. I may be consequently or consecutively is probably a better word, doing another deal in Marion, Indiana with another broker on a whole separate deal. And I've got him under just that deal and I've got you under just this deal. Um, as a tenant rep, working for the tenant, we've already talked about that, you can make a good living doing this, but you may have a little bit more responsibility than just being, than being a listing or a selling agent um, because you may also have to deal with location analysis for your client. Is this going to be, you know, what are you guys building? Uh, let's go back to the one that I put in up in Park 100. They were doing reclamation of metals off of computers. All right, they were not a destination. They did not need a drive-by spot. Nobody was driving by with their computer in the back seat and went, hey, there's where I should take it. They had planned arrangements with companies to go in and buy computers and they would be shipped directly to their back door. Okay, because of that, they didn't need a high profile spot. Well, that was something that we kind of determined as I was their tenant rep. Hey, you don't want to go here. You want to go here. You want to go here, not here. So all of that is an important function of as a tenant rep. Um, assessing the condition of the building when you're bringing your client in. You know, these guys were getting deliveries by the pickup truck, but the place we ultimately ended up putting it in didn't have a dock. It had a drive-in door. So what happens is now these guys raise the garage door and, the, and this big box truck backs in and they manually unload all these computers and that's what they accepted as their business plan as acceptable. You got safety concerns. Is it a bad neighborhood? Is the building old? Is there fire sprinklers? Are you doing something that could potentially call for special kinds of safety equipment? Like if you're dealing with a bunch of a buddy of mine makes pipes, we put him in a, and I mean like smoking pipes. So he's got grinders and air handling. He had to put his own air handling system in because they deal with wood grinders and um, 
you know, the, the pipe stems and all that kind of grinders that got in the air, so they put their own air handling system in. That was something that we had to find a space that, one, they fit in, but two, this air handling they would allow, and three, they would actually fit in. You also have to be an advocate when you are talking with a landlord, much like you are when you're working with a buyer, talking to a seller, you've got the same advocacy that you do with the landlord and when you're representing your buyer. You know, hey, let's negotiate, we can't do that, give us some concessions, we'll take that price, but we want two or three months free, we want to reduce this, or we want you to add this. Um, you know, for instance, uh, the one with the pipe, uh, we wanted them to take a room out, and for that we would sign a three-year lease, all right? They come back and said, we really would like a five-year lease, and Nate said, okay, here's what we'll do. We'll do five years, but uh, on top of taking that room, one room out, obviously, hence the flex, like we talked about, because they wanted more manufacturing space, less office, they also asked for concessions and new carpet in the front that they're keeping. So these people obviously somehow did their math, whatever they did, their black magic, rolled the chicken bone mumbo jumbo and came back and said, yes, if you sign the five-year lease at this rate, which is in our acceptable range, we'll put new carpet in the front, flex the office space smaller, i.e. meaning taking out some of that back office space, and allow you to put in your own air handling unit at your cost, of course. My client said, okay, uh, and we took that. Now, rep remember that you guys are not attorneys, so you have to be real careful. The negotiation is not an issue, but obviously writing the contract. And if you allow your landlord to write that contract, duh, McFly, how do you think that contract's going to look favorably when you look at it? <laughs> the very first one we got, I remember Nate looked at it, and he called me, and he said, well, first of all, it was like 19 pages. So he calls me, and he's like... Raymond, this is written in the landlord's advantage on everything. I'm like, hello, Nate. Who do you think it was written by? It was written by the landlord's attorney. We need to engage a guy now and let him look at this lease and negotiate some of the points. Well, we ended up finding a couple that we could wiggle in and accept, and we actually added a point or two. But, you know, you're not an attorney. You need to engage an attorney because just like a purchase, a lease is negotiable, especially in the commercial world where you're dealing a lot more division of labor. And what I mean by that is the tenants improvements are on me, you know, the paints on me, uh, taxes are on you, yada, yada, yada. So we got to make sure we clear all that out. All right. Well, I'm just a tad bit over. I thank you all for staying. Um, don't forget that there's other stuff. Um, and you guys, as members uh, to the membership area, um, actually have access to more continuing ed courses. If there's anything I can do for you, remember, my name is Raymond Modulin. We're right here all the time. Give me a call or email me at help at myrealyou.com if you've got any questions. All right, until then, I thank you very much and invite you back uh, anytime. Bye.